All right, so a couple weeks out from being in New York, um, this particular video, we uh, just went down into Manhattan, primarily around Times Square, Radio City, for a few hours and just uh, kind of with the mindset of like, let's just shoot a bunch of double exposures on Cinestill. I think I shot an entire roll of 35 millimeter Cinestill without a single frame on it. I think my goal was like, I'm going to, every frame on this film is going to have two exposures on it. And that's how I ended up with some some weird ones because yeah, because, hour. because I might yeah it might be an hour Stay in between the two pictures. exposures on the one frame where you can't even remember where or what was on it, which kind of made for some interesting photography, I guess you know. Um, but yeah, we got some cool double exposures. Walked around Manhattan, burned some calories. The dogs were barking. The dogs were <laughs> barking. Wait for it to get dark. Bust out the portrait and the cine still and get some color film photography going in Times Square here. You want to see what a vomit of commercialism looks like? Here you go. First frame we shot was uh, was the uh, the preacher in Times Square. Yeah, that guy was a trip, man. Yeah. And you spent a lot of time like. Well, I mean, I kind of got what I was looking for when I envisioned that shot. I just saw it, he was right at the corner of the intersection and there was literally like hundreds of people just like every time the walk sign would go on, just like almost like flowing around him like water. And I thought if I shot it at a 30th of a second focused on him, I would get like a lot of like motion blur and the people almost like two motion blurs of people just all around him while he's just fixated still with the sign. He wanted to go check out the American flag that was uh, almost in like neon or LED lighting. And uh, it wasn't fruitful at first, but this guy walked past us. And I remember I was like, yo. Yeah, you spotted him. Yeah. He was like, nah, nah, I don't like getting my picture taken on me. And we're like, all right, man, all right. And then, and then what happened? He came back like, like it was 20 minutes yeah, later, yeah. 30 minutes yeah. later. He just comes rolling back up with his daughter and he's yeah. like, and she's like, my, my dad wants to actually take the picture. <laughs> that was sick. Yeah, yeah. When I did the double exposure too, I didn't want it to like destroy his face because there's so much light in Times Square that if you do a double, a double exposure, you're going to have light sources coming through the whole image. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure I covered half the lens with my hand, like oh, okay, yeah. shot one frame and then reset the film and covered half the lens and shot the portrait of him and shot the oh, portrait oh wild so it's not oh, just okay. a double exposure i also like physically blacked out a portion of the photo where when i was shooting the flag i blacked out the portion of the photo where i knew i was going to put his face right i think we just turned around from where the uh, recruiting station was and we seen this the brooklyn deli style like neon lights here yeah uh those oranges looked really cool on Cinestill. oh man they pulled out super nice because with Cinestill, you always think red 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 i want red but like yeah the the um combination of those orange light sources and then like the shadows on Cinestill kind of leaning more towards like a cool like blue or teal hue it's it almost gives you that like that intentional, that, that editing that like everyone does, where it's like orange and, teal, orange, yeah. and teal, orange and teal, orange and teal, orange and teal, cinematic color grading. But like, that's the beauty of film. You shoot cinema still, and when you're converting the files, you just leave it a little bit more on the cool side, and boom. Yeah, so we had asked a couple of people to do double exposures with the Radio City sign. This was the first one. This photo came out really clean, but where it landed, it's like, I couldn't have made that land dead center on her face if I tried. If that's what I was trying to do. Split straight but that's down not at all what I wanted to do, obviously. Like, I would have loved that O to land right on her eye. But it's all guesswork. It's not like you're looking at a second image and lining it up. But yeah, the, the photo's technically very nice. And it was like, she was, you know, focus was pretty nailed on her and stuff. But it's too, too straight. 
I actually like this. Yeah, this is really hectic and it almost looks like you took one picture was upside down. Yeah, it was because I was just walking around. I was like, I think I was like, I'm gonna fill this whole roll with double exposures. And I was just like, you know, I'd shoot one and then reset it and then walk around for 15 minutes. Yeah. And then sometimes you don't remember like which way you had the camera when you're, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's almost, it almost reminds me of like a palette knife painting or something. It's kind of abstract. This one, we were just walking and I right. just, yeah, like quick, quick flick mm -hmm. person walking towards me. I just kind of, I don't even think I focused. I just kind of like half focused flick. And once again, I didn't even know what I had. And I was just randomly shooting a frame and shooting another. And it's kind of cool. I There's potential like there. I like how you, all the people walking and you know what I mean? There's things like I would never think to like shoot a group of people walking. But when you see it underneath the face and like, oh, there's, there's definitely something there to play with, you know, with a bit more time. This one, you messaged me and said this might have been like your favorite picture from the whole trip. Yeah, it's my favorite so. picture from the trip. Yeah. For sure. I love the expression on the, the woman's face. She's obviously like in motion, walking, just looking down. She's in her own mind. For me anyway, it, it took me a minute to like figure it out, which I liked because, you know, if you look at a photo and it's like off the hop, you're like, okay, this is a nice looking photo. But then it kind of pulls you in and makes you start to think about things. Then to me, that's you know, a good photo. I, I kind of pre-visualized it, and I I think I said if this is good, like right. it's gonna be one of the one of the good photos. Yeah. But this worked out perfect. I like like versus the other one where the Radio City landed right down the middle of her nose. Like this is another person. Obviously, we stopped two two people who are both just walking around with their partners and like, hey, can I use you for a photo? And she was super cool. And some of these pictures are a lesson in what we talked about earlier, where it's like, just wait. Like, yeah, just, just wait. find somewhere and wait. And don't be afraid to talk to people and yeah. approach people. Like, the worst they're gonna say is no. And then you turn around and you're like, okay, wait, have wait a good some night. More. And then sometimes they come back. Like that guy, <laughs> like yeah, that dude, yeah. Because they think about it, because right off the hop, they're like, why does this person want to take a picture of me? Right. Like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then they like, started thinking about it. And I bet you it's kind of like, kind of like us when it's like, I go home and I'm like, man, I should have shot that photo. Or I should have asked that person. There are probably some of these people go home and like, oh, that would have been cool to have that photo of myself. Like I should have just did it. 